I'm David George with Southern Adventist University, and we just received a new A7S II, the new camera from Sony, and we paired with it a set of Rokinon primes, and then this is actually an EF mount, so it's a Canon mount lens, but this is an E mount camera, the Sony E mount. And we made a conscious decision there, which does require us to use an adapter to put this camera, this camera, on with this lens. So um, I'm going to show you how this actually works and sort of tell you why we decided to do it that way versus just going ahead and getting the Rokinon lenses in E-mount. So I'm going to start with uh, going ahead and opening up the things that we've got here. Uh, this is a fresh from the factory Rokinon. This is the DS series of camera. And, um, or rather, the DS series of lens. This is the DS series of lens. And uh, it comes with a little carry pouch, a little soft pouch. And then it is packed inside this plastic bag. And I don't think there's a whole lot else to show in here. There's some documentation, uh, just a little paperwork there. I'm going to set that to the side and just go ahead with the lens. So uh, you can see it has a hood with it, a reversible hood. We can uh, go ahead and put that on. And then this has declicked aperture, so I'm turning the aperture ring. It just slides smoothly from position to position. And then the focus, it just has aperture and focus, and they're both geared so you can use them with a follow focus. So now I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is an adapter, but this is the Photodiox Pro lens mount adapter with what's called the ND throttle, which means it has built-in neutral density. If you're familiar at all with the, can the, with the Sony, rather, the A7S II, you know that it's a low-light beast. You've probably seen the videos on YouTube and Vimeo with this camera shooting, or its predecessor, shooting in moonlight. So that tells you it's a really sensitive camera, which for video purposes you're probably going to need neutral density. So this has a 10-stop neutral density range built into it. I'm going to go ahead... Oh, looks a little dirty. That's going to need to be cleaned. Oh, there we go. Blew it off. There is definitely something on the neutral density in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount the Rokin on here to the... Looking for the dots. There we go. There we go. Didn't hear a very firm click, but it seems like it has clicked. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the lens cap from the A7S II. And I do have a clear red dot on the back of the uh, adapter, which is going to line up with the white dot on the camera. So, so that clicked in nicely. So there we go. A7S II body this ND throttle adapter, and the Rokinon lens. I'm going to go ahead and power this on, just so potentially I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull the lens cap off the Rokinon. Now we can see we've got an, uh, uh, an image here. If we look at the top, I've got aperture ring here and neutral density ring here. So I'm just going to try to show you opened the iris there. Now if I turn the neutral density ring, I can get a full range of brightnesses. You can see my histogram changing. That's turning this blue ring here, neutral density. Same effect basically as changing the iris. You know, I get that effect here. Or I turn the neutral density and I get the same basic effect. So what that really means in practical application is that I have 10 stops of neutral density built into this adapter, uh, which is roughly the same range of exposure values you get off of a standard exposure ring. So that means that I can set my exposure now, not just with the exposure ring, but by changing the relative settings of these two rings, I can get exactly the aperture that I want with the exposure that I want by setting this variable neutral density, 
One con to this is that it has a minimum of one stop of neutral density. So if you want to do that super low light stuff, you'll want to get an additional lens adapter, something like this, that, uh, that does not have any neutral density built in. So if you look at this adapter, this is a, what they call a dumb adapter also. Since this is a manual lens, there's no electronics, so this inexpensive adapter works just fine. If I compare these for you, you'll see that one has, uh, make sure I cap this, keep the sensor clean, and cap the, uh, that's right, there we go, everything's capped. I'm going to go ahead and pull the adapter off, and get everything capped up nice, keep it all nice and safe. And then I'm going to show you the difference in these two units. You can see through this one, you cannot see this one. But if I turn this variable neutral density, you will be able to see through it. Now, if you can see, it's actually clear. You can see through it. And then if I, as I turn this knob, it becomes progressively opaque can't see through it anymore. So two adapters that are doing the same thing, this one with a built-in variable neutral density, this one just clean. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. It eliminates the need to put a lot of neutral density on the front of the glass, and it makes the A7S II a little bit more comparable to shooting with a FS5 or FS7 or something like that that has built-in neutral densities just by adding this slick little ring right in front of the camera body.